welcome back to another Sunday meal prep video. Thank you so much for joining me today. Super excited to bring these meals to you. If you are new here and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and click that red subscribe button down below and that notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos. Also follow me over on Instagram. Here's my Instagram handle and I have a really great Facebook group. It is called Finding Our Way. This is the icon to it and there is a direct link down in the description box to that Facebook group. But this is my weekly meal prep video that I like to put out. I prep for my husband and myself for Sunday night through Friday night. I will prep two different meals, six, serving of, six servings of each because we'll have those six nights. And so we just alternate Sunday night through Friday night, which I do kind of show in my weekly vlog uh, that follows up after this video. But for the recipes today, before we get into it, uh, I do have one new recipe and then I am going to make a repeat meal. It is a super easy one, but it is one of our favorites. I am going to show a couple of low point uh, pumpkin pies and pecan pies that you can make for Thanksgiving for dessert. So for the new meal, this is a skinny taste recipe. Y'all know I love skinny taste recipes. I have not yet made one that I did not like. I will throw that out there. Now, sometimes I do modify them and I am going to modify some things in this recipe. So don't be afraid to make modifications. Um, this is chicken and broccoli noodle casserole. Okay, so it does call for like egg noodles. I'm going to use the fiber gourmet rotini noodles instead. I'm not going to use the olive oil. I will just use my spray because I think um, it calls for like a shallot. Y'all know we don't eat onions and so I'm not going to have to saute any onions or anything. Uh, but yeah, overall it looks pretty good. We will uh, go over all the details once we get to it, but for the side for that, I thought that I would do, um, and this I think is going to be a zero point cranberry sauce for me. Now I know with points, and speaking of points, what I have decided to do, and there will be a video prior to this that is already up, but I'm going to, I guess, share what my points are for these recipes, but everybody's points may or may not be the same anymore. They may be different um, because of the personal points plans, but I am going to leave the recipe down in the description box below and also a link from my ww app where i have created the recipe in there so you can click on that link this only works if you have um the ww app or website or whatever i don't know if you use the app or if you use the desktop version it should work on either one it will ask you to log in whenever you click that link and then i think you have to save it to your favorites now my advice is to go through and look at the ingredients make sure if you make it if you make any changes that you make those changes you should be able to edit it but i do think that it will calculate your personal points based on your plan just from importing my recipe okay so that i think is the best way to share the recipes it also will make it a little bit easier on y'all you don't even have to go in and create the recipe in your own app but double check me I do make mistakes I am not perfect so I just want to throw that out there and I said that in the video that I made about the new personal points plan as well uh, but for me this cranberry sauce should be a zero point meal I have not plugged it in yet but it's just cranberries uh, I'm going to use a swerve brown sugar, a little bit of cinnamon, some lemon juice, some fresh orange juice, and some salt. Okay, so I love cranberry sauce. I don't know really if Charlie loves cranberry sauce that much, but he was on board with this for a side. So I didn't want to make like a full like Thanksgiving type food because I'm not a huge lover of Thanksgiving food, to be honest. I mean, I like it on Thanksgiving Day, and then I'm kind of over it at that point. Um, but I wanted to do something that was a little Thanksgiving-ish, but what I do love are my little pecan pies and mini um, pumpkin pies that we are going to make for dessert today. Uh, now, I do make those using little wonton wrappers. Uh, Roy made the pumpkin pies on his channel using some little mini taco bowls. I did pick some of those up at Walmart if you saw my grocery haul. So we'll see. I don't want to make too many for Charlie and I for this week because, um, and I don't know if I'm going to do the pumpkin. I don't know what I'm going to do. We'll just see whenever I get there. I don't want to use all of my wonton wrappers either because Thanksgiving is just a few days away. So I want enough to be able to make because I want to keep enough wonton wrappers 
to where I don't have to buy another pack. I probably will. We shall see. Anywho, uh, so that is for the one meal, the chicken and broccoli casserole and cranberry sauce. And then the other repeat meal is just going to be our taco bowls. I feel like this one is a little bit more difficult and then making the pecan pies and pumpkin pies will take a little bit of time. So I wanted another easy meal. Basically, it is literally just browning our taco meat, getting that ready and throwing it in a bowl and then we are good to go. During the week, I like to either eat that as a taco salad or I like to put it on an Olay Extreme Wellness Wrap and kind of make me a couple of quesadillas out of it. And yeah, you cannot go wrong with the taco bowls. They are low in points for me because I did choose beans and corn as one of my zero point foods. But again, I will share the recipe link down in the description box and I cannot stress enough to be sure to check the description box. Most of your questions are already going to be answered in that description box. I will have links to the skinny taste recipes. I will have a link to this cranberry sauce recipe. And then I will also have the links from my WW app to where you can import that directly into yours. It will not work if you use iTrack Bites or MyFitnessPal or anything else, only WW. If you would like to try out a month of WW for free, I do have a link for that. And also, I'm sure that WW probably has great deals going on right now. It's coming up to the end of the year or whatever. If You might even get more free if you just go online and see what they have to offer. But if you want to try a free month just to try out this new personal points plan, then I got you. You can click my link down below. You'd get a free month and then I get a free month as well. So it is a win-win for everyone. That's my lunch. I'm going to get it out, eat, and then we are going to jump into this meal prep. Okay, everyone, this is everything that we have to prep today or that Charlie has to prep today. It's really just my peppers, my tomato, um, my cantaloupe, and my pineapples as normal. Uh, we are going to, right after this, I'm going to go ahead and use three chicken breasts from the freezer to cook for the casserole that I'm going to make because I need it already cooked prior to the casserole. I didn't even realize that until I was looking at the recipe just now. I was like, oh heck, I'm going to have to put that on before I get in the shower. So Charlie is just going to trim these up just like he did last week and we are going to use the ones from the freezer. And then of course I will wash my blueberries in the vinegar and water as usual. So Charlie really does not have a whole lot of prep today. Lucky him. Um, and overall I think that we have fairly easy meals. I am going to spend a little more time on the desserts and then I am making the cranberries. I didn't get the cranberries out. Um, I will probably rinse those off. I don't know if I'll rinse those in vinegar or not. We shall see. But I'm going to jump over here real quick and we're going to go ahead and just put the frozen chicken breast in the crock pot so they can be cooking while I am getting ready and stuff. They probably need to cook on high at least about four hours. All right, so here are the three chicken breasts that I'm going to cook for the chicken casserole. I've just salt and peppered one side and we are just going to put salt and pepper on the other and that's all of the seasonings that I'm going to put on it. And then I'm just going to put in a can of chicken broth and probably a couple of cans of water just to cover it and we are just going to let it cook and then that way it'll pretty much be, you know, just plain chicken. doesn't have to have a lot of flavor. The chicken broth in itself will add some flavor so we're just going to do one can of chicken broth and then just a couple of cans of water. And there we go. That's all there is to it. We are going to cook it on high. Um, for at least four hours. Hopefully it will be ready by the time I get ready to start the casserole this afternoon. So we will uh, now roll into Charlie's prep. You got that something, baby, that I can go without just like a poison in me. You're all that I'm about. Having the highs on my Tell me love should never drive you crazy But I lose my mind 
together our fruit bowls as usual and get those in the fridge out of the way and then we are going to get started on the chicken and broccoli casserole. I have my fruit and yogurt ready to go in the fridge. Here is the tomato that Charlie sliced for me for this week. And then my diced bell peppers. I don't have any green ones this week because Walmart literally didn't have any. All they had was red, yellow, and orange. So that's what I got this week. But that is perfectly fine. So I'm going to throw these in the fridge and we are going to get started on our casserole. All right, everyone. We are ready to start on the chicken and broccoli noodle cut chicken and broccoli noodle casserole this is a skinny taste recipe uh, i am making a couple of modifications i will have the original recipe linked down below as well as my recipe from the ww app showing my points calculations and once you import it it should recalculate based on your personal points but anywho, let's go over the ingredients real quick. So it calls for six ounces of egg noodles. I'm actually going to just use this light rotini and there is eight ounces in this bag. I'm just going to go ahead and use the whole bag. That is uh, two points, I think, per serving. It calls for two, te two teaspoons of olive oil, which I'm not going to use. I'm probably just going to use my olive oil spray. Four cloves of garlic. So I'm just going to use like four teaspoons of my minced garlic. 12 ounces of fresh broccoli florets chopped. This is probably about 16 ounces. The bag I bought was a big 32 ounce bag and we used about half of it. I didn't measure it exactly. It is zero points. A tablespoon of butter, which I'm really just gonna use my butter spray. It calls for a medium shallot, which I'm leaving out. Three tablespoons of all purpose flour, which I have measured out right here. Uh, one and three fourths cups of chicken broth, which I have here, which uh, by the way, that is exactly one can. I had no idea that one can was one and three fourths cups. I knew it was nearly two cups, but um, I was going to open two cans and glad I didn't open that second one. Uh, one cup of 1% milk, which I actually am using 1% milk or fat free uh, instead of almond milk. Charlie wanted me to use that instead of the almond milk. We have the shredded chicken breast. It calls for 12 ounces. This is just three chicken breast. Chicken is zero for me. So um, I'm probably going to put in like a pound in my recipe builder. If chicken is not zero for you, be sure to adjust that if you import this recipe into your WW app. Four ounces of shredded uh, reduced fat sharp cheddar cheese. I'm using this fat-free mild cheddar. So I have four ounces measured out here. Two tablespoons of shredded Parmesan cheese. I'm just going to use this grated Parmesan cheese, which we're almost out. We're going to have to definitely get some more of that. And two tablespoons of seasoned breadcrumbs. So I just picked up these Progresso Italian and Herb. And so I have the two tablespoons measured out there as well. So first of all, we're going to cook the noodles until al dente. So slightly undercooked by two minutes. And we're going to set that aside. And then we're going to add the garlic and then cook the broccoli um, I have my oven preheating to 375. I have my casserole dish ready. And yeah, so we will just go through it. Let me um, get my pasta in. My water is boiling for the pasta. And yep, we will get this mixed up pretty quick and in the oven. Okay, as you can see, my water is really boiling. I am going to salt my water pretty well. And we are going to turn it down just a little bit and put the whole package of the Fiber Gourmet Rotini noodles in here. Again, you can adjust the recipe to whole wheat or whatever it is that you use, regular noodles or the egg noodles as the recipe calls. We love the Fiber Gourmet though. 
So we're going to cook that, is that six to ten minutes? I'm just going to do a little timer right here for six minutes. I think that will give it the perfect uh, texture. And we'll give that a little stir. Okay, so while the pasta is cooking, we're going to go ahead and do the broccoli and the garlic. So it says to heat the oil and cook the um, garlic for about a minute. Garlic is very easy to burn. You definitely don't want to overcook it. And we are just going to use about four teaspoons, which should be the equivalent of about four cloves. And then we're going to add the broccoli in here. So we'll give that about a minute. We'll be right back. Okay, so the garlic has been cooking for about a minute or so. We are going to go ahead and add in our broccoli. And it says a little salt, so we're just going to do a little pinch of salt in there. And we're going to saute this and then we're going to cover it until the broccoli is kind of softened. I'm going to cover that and our pasta should be just about done. The timer is probably fixing to go off on it and then I'm just going to get it out and put it in a bowl. There goes the timer. Hopefully this bowl will be large enough. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to kind of set that there and turn that off. Our broccoli is going to cook for about three minutes or so. Then we're going to take it out and then we're going to assemble everything within this large pot. So I will be right back once the broccoli has cooked for about three minutes. Okay, so I think that the broccoli has cooked long enough. It is softening up some. I don't want it to get too soft after my incident with Instant Pot. So we're going to go ahead and take it out of here and set it to the side. I'm just going to put it back in the bowl that it was in to begin with. Okay, and then we are just going to use the same pot to go on to the next step, which is to heat the butter, add the shallot, which we are not going to do that part. And then we are going to add the flour and a pinch of salt and stir well. So we will put a little bit of butter in here. And I'm just going to leave those pieces of garlic. Since we're not uh, using the shallot, it will be fine. It's all going to go back together anyway. I'm going to add the flour and a little pinch of salt. I'm going to use some of that. I can't believe it's not butter spray. And then it says to slowly whisk in the chicken broth. I'm going to put a little on there and kind of get it mixed up in there. And then we'll add some more. I should have got out my whisk. I forgot to get my whisk out. Oh, well, I think the spatula will be fine. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and add in the milk, and then we're going to bring it to a boil. So I'm going to turn the heat up, and I'm just going to keep stirring. Once it comes to a boil, we're going to reduce the heat and let it simmer for about five to six minutes. So I will be back once we get to that part. After the six to seven minutes, we're going to remove it from the heat, add in some of the cheese, add in the chicken, the noodles, and the broccoli, saute it, and then it's going in the casserole dish. All right, I am back. This has been heating for five to six minutes. I almost let it burn. It's scorching to the bottom. So we are going to remove it from the heat and get my little trivet to put it on, bring you over. So this is looking pretty good. Um, now, what it says to do, remove from heat and add the cheddar cheese and one tablespoon of the Parmesan cheese and mix until the cheese is melted. So, we are going to do, when this is a half tablespoon, so we're going to do two of these for the Parmesan cheese. One, two, and then I guess all of the cheddar cheese. And then we're just going to mix it until the cheese melts which actually did not take very long just a couple of minutes here so that's looking melted pretty good now we're going to add in the chicken the noodles and the broccoli so i'm going to go ahead and add in my noodles and my broccoli try to get all that garlic in there too and my chicken and then basically we just mix this until it is all well coated Okay, I think that's pretty well coated. Now we are going to turn around here to the casserole dish and we're
we're gonna put it in the casserole dish and we're gonna top with the rest of the Parmesan cheese and the breadcrumbs. Then it's going in the oven. So I'm just gonna spray the casserole dish with some of this butter spray. Maybe it won't stick. And we're just gonna pour the whole thing in. This pan's, this pot's heavy, y'all, with the stuff in it. Try to even that out as well as possible. And then we're just gonna top with the rest of the Parmesan cheese and the breadcrumbs. Perfect, now, let's see here. It says to spray a little more cooking spray on top and bake for 20 to 25 minutes. There we go, we're going in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. All right, while the casserole is baking in the oven, we're gonna go ahead and do the cranberry sauce, which should be zero points, I would think on most people's plans, um, because it was on green, purple, or blue, uh, but it is from the Pound Dropper, and it is just one pound of fresh cranberries, which I have them here, I just bought those and rinsed them off. Two tablespoons of brown sugar substitute, so I'm gonna use the Swerve brown sugar replacement and then a fourth of a teaspoon of cinnamon and then half a tablespoon of lemon juice i'm just going to use this lemon juice and then it called for two tablespoons of fresh orange juice so i just squeezed some fresh juice from an orange i picked one orange up at the grocery store and then three-fourths of a teaspoon of salt combine it all in a pot over medium heat and you know you basically are going to cook it the cranberries will start to crack open if you've ever made homemade cranberry sauce then you know um, it's going to take about eight to ten minutes and kind of let it thicken up a little bit and then it says to let it cool for 20 minutes and then refrigerate for at least two hours stored in an airtight container so um, what i will probably do is make this and store it and then i will divide it out into our meal prep well now actually this is what i'm going to have to leave out of the meal prep containers because i don't want to heat it when i heat the other part so I'll probably just store this separately from our chicken casserole. I will go ahead and divide the chicken casserole out and then just leave this stored in a separate container. So it doesn't have to be measured perfectly anyway because it is zero points. So let's just hop right into it. I got my pot here. I just washed the one that I used to cook the noodles. And we are gonna go in, it says just combine everything in the pot over medium heat. So we're on medium heat, we're gonna put our cranberries in and we'll go ahead in with our orange juice. And then we need half a tablespoon of lemon juice. And so this is a half tablespoon here. Add that right in. Then we need a fourth of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And this is a fourth of a teaspoon here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And then we need three fourths of a teaspoon of salt. So this is a fourth, so I'm just going to do three of these. One, two, and three. And then we need two tablespoons of the Swerve. And I am going to leave that packed in there. It's zero points, so if it's a little extra, then that just means it'll be a little extra good. So there we go. Two tablespoons of the brown sugar replacement. And we will just stir this and wait for the cranberries to crack open and for it to uh, thicken up. So we will just come back to this once it kind of gets close to the end. Okay, so my cranberry sauce is looking pretty good. I think it is just about done. You can hear these cranberries kind of popping open. It's kind of funny. It's been a long time since I've made homemade cranberry sauce. But I personally love cranberries. I love the tartness of them. Um, so we're just going to let this cook. I've turned it down real low just for like another minute or two. And then I'm just going to put it in a container. And our casserole is almost done. It's cooked for 22 minutes. And then I have popped it up under the broiler just to brown the tops of it. So let me get that out and then I will show it all to you. And then in a few minutes, we will get it plated up. This has to sit and cool for a while. And like I said, I'm not going to put that in the containers anyway. All right, here is the chicken broccoli pasta casserole out of the oven. I did just put it under the broiler for just a couple of minutes just to kind of brown the tops, but it looks and smells delicious. And then here is my cranberry sauce. I just put it in here to cool. I will store it probably in a different container that has, it says to put it in like a sealed 
container so I will put it in one of my plastic containers but keep it separate from this um, I did notice that this recipe is only for like four servings so we'll probably each just get like a couple of little scoops each night to try to make it last um, three different nights for us but uh, I think this has turned out delicious and I will cut this into six servings and just put this in a container I'm gonna let it sit here and cool for a little bit and then we will plate her up. All right, guys, we are going to go ahead and plate up the casserole. I have it cut into six portions, so hopefully it will come out easily. Hopefully it don't stick. There we go, perfect. That's the way I'm gonna portion it out. Let's uh, zip through this real quick and then we will have this meal Here is the completed um, chicken broccoli casserole from Skinny Taste. It is looking delicious. These are actually nice hearty portions, kind of heavy. And then I just put the cranberry sauce into this container. I'm just going to keep it separate. That way we can heat this up and then just get us a couple of scoops of cranberry sauce to go along with it. Not 100% sure if Charlie will eat the cranberry sauce or not. I can't remember if he likes cranberries or not. But um, that is a good... It should be zero to two points on the personal points, but blue, purple, and green, it is a zero point meal, and it will be zero points for me on my personal points as well. But again, I will leave all of that down in the description box, or I will leave the link to the recipe. You can import it if you are interested in making it, but if you want to make a good little Thanksgiving side to take, so if you like cranberry sauce, there you go, zero points. Then you can uh, spend your points on other food while you are at your Thanksgiving dinners. So, gonna uh, move on now to the taco bowls. All right, we are ready to get started on the taco bowls. I'm gonna use ground turkey breast for mine. Charlie is gonna use ground beef on his. We will split these, so we'll each get half a packet of the hot and spicy taco seasoning, half a packet of the original Taco Bell, and half a packet of the Frontera. Of course, we will salt and pepper as well, and then we will just drain and rinse the black beans and corn, and that is a quick, easy way to make taco bowls and have them ready. You can make them into taco salads, quesadillas, which is probably what I will do because I've gotten to where I love having them that way, and yeah, we will just layer them up in the bowls. They will be ready to just pop in the microwave and warm up. So I'm going to um, work on mine. Charlie's going to work on his. I'm probably going to just overlay some music and do a little speed clip because we're probably going to be loud and noisy in here for just a minute while this is cooking. So let's get into it. Smile so they see you. <laughs> okay. Charlie's takes a little bit longer because it's like a fattier ground beef. So his is still simmering. I'm going to go ahead and plate mine up and then Charlie is going to plate his up. So let me tilt you down here. And I have my two cans of drained and rinsed um, whole kernel corn. I can't even think of what that was. Mm -hmm. Two cans of drained and rinsed corn and then two cans of drained and rinsed black beans. And so we will each just kind of layer into our three bowls each and I believe this comes out to about two points or so for me um, again I'll have to double check it under the personal points plan but I tried to choose everything to pretty much not change so hopefully it's still about two points Then whenever I have it, I like to make it into the quesadillas, which adds a couple of more points because of the Olay Extreme Wellness Wraps, but that's okay because I have them to spare. Or I will make a taco salad 
and eat some of my um, baked tostitos with it. And then sometimes I do like a combination. I'll have like a small taco salad with one bag of baked tostitos and one quesadilla. So lots of different ways you can eat this. All right, Charlie's is finally done. He's gonna plate his up as well. looks like turkey corn black beans perfect and I did choose beans and corn to be zero on my personal points plan presentation nice. <laughs> All right, here are the completed taco bowls. Mine are the three in the front with the ground turkey, and then here are Charlie's with the ground beef. Um, again, I believe that mine is going to come out to be two points, but I will have the recipe for mine linked down below. I will not link Charlie's. I think he used 80%. Was it ground chuck today? Yeah. So he really used like a high fat meat on his. So we don't really care what his points are, but um, I will leave mine with the lean ground turkey. Of course, you can import the recipe, and then if you want to change it to ground beef, then you can edit it once you import it into your WW app. So these look good, and now we are going to move on to desserts. All right, everyone, we are going to make some little mini pumpkin pies and little mini pecan pies. I'm going to do just six of each. I did get out two. 12 cup muffin cups. I'm going to do them separate because I think with the pumpkin pie ones, I have to cover them with foil and they are actually going to cook for like 20 minutes. And then the pecan pie ones, you don't have to cover with foil, so they will cook a lot faster. And so I do have my mini pumpkin pies all nice and topped up in a recipe. <laughs> my pecan pies, I just have written out. And both of these recipes I got last year from Amanda Seifert. I did not come up with these recipes myself. Um, but the mini pumpkin pies are about one point, I think. They were on the blue plan. And then the pecan pies, mm, they were either one or two points. I don't 100% remember. I think two points because of the chopped pecans and then the wonton wrappers. So basically, we are going to place two wonton wrappers and kind of crisscross them. This is what we're going for, this look, if you can see it because of the glare. Um, we're going to crisscross them. And six of these on each side and then I'm gonna mix up the mixture for both and get them in there and then we're gonna bake them in the oven kind of together but again the pumpkin will cook longer and be covered whereas the pecan is not but these are nice easy low point ways to you know take something for dessert for you for yourself for your family or whoever is on a diet at Thanksgiving you may not care you may just want to go ahead and eat the real stuff which is perfectly fine I am gonna make real pump no pecan pies that's kind of my thing that I always make at Thanksgiving uh, but I'm also gonna make some of these little mini ones and take as well and then I like to take some of the coconut ready whip or fat free ready whip or whatever and put on top very good delicious and these are the wonton wrappers if you've never seen those in the store before we usually can only find them at Publix Charlie are they in the produce section yeah yeah, yeah. so they're in the produce section at Publix um, and they're you know small so we're just going to kind of crisscross them let me uh, get everything together and I will show you how to put them together and hopefully we will be done and we will wrap up this meal prep all right, so we have our two muffin tins here. What we're going to do is spray just six in each of them. That's what I'm going to make is six pumpkin and six pecan. And then we're going to layer the wonton wrappers. Okay, so here's what you want to do. We're going to put one in one way. And then we are just going to crisscross and put the other one in. It's going to make like a little pocket. 
Now the little corners of these that stick up, they do get kind of crispy. I don't mind it. Um, now I did pick up some little mini taco bowls if you saw my grocery haul to try those. I'm not going to try those today basically for the lack of time because as usual time just slips away from me um, and I just want to get it done. So we are just going to do the wonton wrappers today, but for Thanksgiving, I may experiment a little and try the little taco bowls. Roy used them, and he liked them. So you just make like a little cup, and then once we get our mixture, we will scoop it in there. So let me just speed through the rest of these. Okay, so that gets the wonton wrappers in there. Now we will just mix them up one at a time. We will just go ahead and do the pumpkin first. Rinse my fingers off. So I'm going to kind of half the recipe. The recipe calls to make 12 of them, and it calls for a whole can of pumpkin. I'm just going to use what I've got left from the pumpkin last week, um, which is probably a little over half a can or right at half a can. Uh, it does call for one egg. I'm not going to half the egg. I'm just going to use the whole egg. Um, and it calls for a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. So we'll do like half a teaspoon of that. It calls for a fourth of a cup of monk fruit sweetener. So we will try to do an eighth of a cup. And then, and I'm not really mad if it's even overly sweet. Uh, half a cup of brown sugar replacement. So I may do like a fourth of a cup, maybe a little bit more. And then it calls for a fourth of a cup of unsweetened almond milk. I don't have that out. I will have to grab that. So I'll definitely only do like an eighth of a cup of almond milk. So let me grab a bowl. And I'm going to go ahead and do my egg first. Let me move y'all over here where y'all can see. All right, I got a bowl. I'm going to go ahead and put my egg in. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in the rest of this pumpkin. So it calls for a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. Of course, I'm half in this, so I'm just probably going to do a little less than a teaspoon. I mean, I ain't mad to have a little extra flavor in there. I'm going to do just a little under a fourth of a cup of monk fruit sweetener. The recipe calls for a fourth of a cup since we are halving it. Okay, and so it calls for a half a cup of brown sugar. I'm just going to go ahead and do like a really heaping fourth of a cup. Wow, that's right out of fourth of a cup. I'm going to do a little bit more. Mmm, it smells good, y'all. Smells like pumpkin pie. Okay, so we are just going to spoon it in here. I guess I don't need to hold that over the one hunch. You can't see. You are up to me. Stop dancing to the music and the chase. Like this was meant to be. Take my hand. I feel my heart beating. I don't want this moment to stop. Okay, perfect. So I got it all in there. So we are going to cover this with aluminum foil and I'm going to go ahead and put it in the oven and then we will mix up the pecan pies because they take less time to cook. So I'm going to grab my aluminum foil. So these are going to go in for 20 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and put those in and then we will come back and make the pecan pies. Okay, so I have my little bowl here. Are we going to focus? There we go. So for the mini pecan pies, we are going to do one egg. It calls for two for the recipe since we are halving it. Okay, and then the recipe calls for half a cup of chopped pecans, so we are just going to use a fourth of a cup. And then same thing, it calls for a fourth of a cup of monk fruit sweetener. We'll just try to do an eighth of a cup. We'll just eyeball it. My fruit sweetener is zero, or at least it is for me. I think it's zero calories. It is, so it'll be zero for everybody. And then it calls for a fourth of a cup of sugar-free maple syrup. I'm going to use this sugar-free Keras, and we'll just try to do like half of this. Should be good. And that's it. We just mix it up, and then basically a good tablespoon goes into each one Han wrapper. And I think these are two points each, but you can get pecan pie for two points. 
So I think it's worth it. They're really good. And so as you can see, that's really not a whole lot of mixture in there, but we'll put a tablespoon in and then just kind of even out the rest. These are going to go in for 12 to 15 minutes. You don't have to cover these. And again, they will kind of get crispy on the edges, but I don't mind it. I personally like the crispy texture of it, but you can also fold those in if you don't like the crispy edges. But um, 12 to 15 minutes, 350 degrees. The pumpkin pies are covered for 20 minutes, 350 degrees. So those pumpkin pies have probably been in now for about five minutes. So maybe these could just finish up with them. And I will show you when they are done. All right, we finally completed today's meal prep. Everything's looking and smelling good today. Over here, of course, I have my seven containers of fruit, my seven containers of yogurt back there. These are our taco bowls. The ones on this side are mine with the ground turkey. And then Charlie has the ground beef in his. Uh, here are our little mini desserts. I didn't show a close-up of them after they came out because I was in a rush to get the table set up. But these in the front are the pecan pies, and then we have the nice little pumpkin pies back there. And they do come out, you know, kind of solid like that. Um, they are super good, super low in points. If you really want to try to have a nice little treat, or even after Thanksgiving, if you just want that flavor and, you know, that comfort food, even if you eat the real thing on Thanksgiving, these are good. Just, um, you know, if you wanted like that Thanksgiving taste in between your holiday dinners or whatever. Uh, and then here is some zero point for me cranberry sauce again I will have the recipe um, linked from the pound dropper I think and then also for all of these recipes I will have my link from my app where I did it in the recipe builder link so that you can import it and then this is the chicken broccoli pasta casserole from Skinny Taste, and um, I don't know what the points are on this yet. I have not built it in my recipe builder yet. I'm guessing it's gonna be around six points or so per serving. And then my scrambled eggs and my bacon for the week. Uh, I never film this on Sundays because I hate making these big batches. Once I'm not working, I will not like pre-make my breakfast anymore. But if you wanna see how I make it, then I always show it on my Saturday vlog. Uh, making my breakfast on Saturday mornings. But anywho, overall, I think that I have completed another successful meal prep. Okay guys, thank you so much for joining me for another Sunday meal prep. I think today's meals are all gonna be delicious. I'm super excited about it. I'm super excited about my little Thanksgiving desserts and my cranberry sauce and stuff like that. Hopefully y'all try some of those for your Thanksgiving holiday this year. And thanks so much to my Jennifer's Gems that always make it to the end. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Mwah.